In this slide deck, we'll actually start working through the RMF, starting with step one, and the first task in step one, task 1-1, one, one, categorize the information system. As you can see from this slide, all of the tasks in step one, categorize, line up with the initiation step of the system development lifecycle. Responsibility for this task falls on the information system owner, the information owner, sometimes referred to as the information steward. These roles get support from the risk executive function, the authorizing official or the authorizing official's designated representative, the chief information officer, the senior information security officer, and also the information system security officer. To understand categorization, you'll need to understand the security objectives. Security objectives are confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These are often referred to as the CIA triad, which will be used throughout your security career. Put simply, confidentiality is keeping information out of the hands of those who are unauthorized to view it. However, the formal definition from FISMA is preserving authorized restrictions on information access and disclosure, including means for protecting personal privacy and proprietary information. A loss of confidentiality is the unauthorized disclosure of information. Again, simply put, integrity is ensuring that information isn't modified or deleted without permission. The FISMA definition of integrity is guarding against improper information modification or destruction and includes ensuring information non-repudiation and authenticity. A loss of integrity is the unauthorized modification or destruction of information. Put simply, availability is the ability to access information by authorized people or processes. FISMA defines this as ensuring timely and reliable access to and use of information. A loss of availability is the disruption of access to or use of information or an information system. Defining the security objectives is important in defining potential impacts as FIPS 199 focuses impact around the loss of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. There are three levels of impact to the CIA triad and to the information system itself. These are low, moderate, and high. With the low impact, the loss of confidentiality, integrity, or availability could be expected to have a limited adverse effect on organizational operations, organizational assets, or individuals. You can read the amplification statement for the low impact level, but it's important to understand that with a low impact, the organization is able to perform its primary function, but that effectiveness is noticeably reduced. There's minor damage, there's minor financial loss, and there's minor harm to individuals. With a moderate impact, the loss of confidentiality, integrity, or availability could be expected to have serious adverse effect on organizational operations, organizational assets, or individuals. With a moderate impact, you can expect to have serious adverse effects which means there'll be significant degradation in mission capability. The organization will be able to perform its primary function, but those functions will be significantly reduced. There will be significant damage, significant financial loss, and significant harm to individual, but does not include the loss of life. With a high impact, the loss of confidentiality, integrity, or availability could be expected to have a severe or catastrophic adverse effect on organizational operations, 
organizational assets, or individuals. A high impact will be severe degradation or loss in mission capability to the point that the organization cannot perform one or more of its primary functions. There will be major damage, major financial loss, severe catastrophic harm to individuals including loss of life. Now that we understand security objectives and impact levels, it's time to start building the foundation for our RMF work. To do this, we need to define the information types that will be living on the information system and determine their impact levels. First, it's important to understand what an information type is. Both FIPS 199 and FIPS 200 define information types as a specific category of information that could be privacy information, medical information, financial, investigative, defined by an organization or in some instance by specific law, executive order, directive policy, or regulation. Basically, the information type is a unique categorization of information. NIST defines many information types in its special publication 800-60. It also defines this general format for expressing the category or the categorization of an information type. This security categorization model will be used throughout the remainder of this slide deck. The formula for defining the security categorization of information type is that the security categorization of the information type is equal to the confidentiality impact the integrity impact, and the availability impact. These impact values can be low, moderate, high, or not applicable. To help explain the determination of an information type, let's look at an illustrative example. In this example, we have three information types. Information type one has a confidentiality of low, an integrity of moderate, and an availability of low. Information type 2 has a confidentiality of low, an integrity of low, and an availability of low. And finally, information type 3 has a confidentiality of high, an integrity of low, and an availability of low. At this point, we've determined the information categorization of these three information types. It is now fairly simple to define the system categorization of a system using these information types. We start by looking at the confidentiality column and determine the highest rating for confidentiality for these three information types. As you can see, that is high. Next we evaluate the integrity column to determine the highest level and in that column it's moderate and finally we evaluate the availability column with those values being low it results in a value of low for the system now that we have a system categorization of high moderate and low we can determine the system high watermark we do this by evaluating the highest level in the row where this row is high, moderate, and low, it's simple to determine that the system categorization high watermark would be high because of the high value in the confidentiality column. Let's take a look at an actual example of an information type from NIST Special Publication 800-60. In this case, we'll look at the customer services information type. We can see that this is defined as customer service support activities associated with providing and managing the delivery of information and support to the government's customers. The recommended security categorization for the customer service information type is as follows. And this is the part we're looking for is that definition of the security categorization of this information type. And we can see that this is a confidentiality of low, integrity of low, and availability of low. 
many of the information types have factors that impact their final determination of impact level. Uh, in this case, we look at the customer service information type, and we note that if there is any types of information that may be covered by the Privacy Act that will be used in the customer service information type, we want to adjust this rating to moderate. Uh, for your full understanding, you can read this excerpt from 860 about a special factor that impacts the confidentiality determination. By reading this special factor, we need to evaluate the types of customer information that the system will be gathering. And if it is covered by the Privacy Act, then we will want to adjust our confidentiality level to moderate from low. Let's look at another example with two information types actually pulled from NIST Special Publication 800-60. That's the customer service information type with a confidentiality of low and integrity of low and availability of low, and the proposal development information type with the confidentiality of moderate and integrity of low and availability of low. By evaluating the confidentiality column for the highest value, we see that that is moderate. Then evaluating the integrity column for its highest value, which is low. And finally, evaluating the availability column for its highest value with a high value of low in that column as well. We can see now that we have a rating for the system of moderate, low, low based on the highest values in each of these columns. For information systems using the high watermark process for determining the information systems categorization, we would evaluate the confidentiality level, the integrity level, and the availability level for the information system and determine the highest value of those areas. In this case, that would be moderate, as confidentiality is moderate, and integrity and availability are both low. This would result in a moderate high watermark for this system. This determination of high watermark is not necessary for Department of Defense or Intelligence Community Systems, as they use the three values to determine the impact level for the system. In those environments, the impact level for this system or the categorization for this system would be a level of moderate low low, sometimes expressed as MLL. Now to summarize what we've covered in this presentation. You should have a solid understanding of the alignment between this task and the system development lifecycle. Understand who is responsible for this task and who supports this task. Understand security objectives and potential impacts. And understand the security categorization process for both information types and for information systems. This presentation is part of the Cyber Recon RMF Lab. In addition to these videos, the lab uses multimodal instruction to drive home the RMF process through the use of videos, learning games, practice quizzes, weekly instructor interaction, an updated RMF book, an updated RMF lab guide, and hands-on experience in a simulated live environment where you practice the techniques you're learning. For a limited time, we're allowing full access to all of the resources available in Step 1 of the Cyber Recon RMF Lab. Click the tile on the right to understand more about the RMF Lab and see how you can gain access to Step 1.